going to read The Secret Librarian is based in Inchicore Library. As a child at seven years old, which is quite a long time ago, I spent every summer holiday in my grands in Mount Brown and I'd walk the short distance down here, pick up two books, Bobby Brewster, Mrs Pepperpot, Enid Blyton and then on to C.S. Lewis, bring them home, read them, come back the next day to pick up another two. It's a place I have very fond memories of and obviously started me on my road to writing. Secret Librarian. Sheila, the head librarian at Inchicore Library, smiled as she overheard the whispered words. Well done, Shannon. I'm so proud of you. Shannon catches her mother's hand, then realising that at ten she's too big for this, slips her hand back out and holds her two library books close to her chest. Mother and daughter push to the green half door, dividing the adult and children's sections, out through the front door and down the steps into the remaining rays of the summer evening. Sheila checks her watch, humming softly as she begins her daily ritual. She tidies up the scattered books, beginning with the oversized, which she houses comfortably in the coloured square blocks in the middle of the floor. Then she moves on to the shelves, around the back walls, her favourite part of the library. Shannon had been coming to the library every week since Christmas. She had first arrived with her mother and signed her name carefully at the end of the application form to get a library card. Sheila could see that Shannon found the first few visits daunting. Her mother Debbie, a young friendly woman, had asked Sheila for help in picking out suitable books for Shannon who found reading a chore. They had walked around the aisles as Sheila pointed out the different sections. Enid Blyton, Roald Dahl, C.S. Lewis and J.K. Rowling. She wanted to make it enjoyable and not overwhelm her with too much choice. From then on, every Wednesday afternoon, Shannon, like many others before her, would skip up the well-worn steps and into the cool shade of the library. Sheila had encouraged the child to sit in the corner at the back of the library on the old blue chair with the fabric nearly worn away in places. It was in a quiet corner where, in Sheila's opinion, some of the best books lived. She sniffed the strong scent of lavender emanating from the corner as she thought back to her own childhood. From the age of seven, spending holidays at her grand's, she'd walked the short distance to the library every day to pick two books. She'd browse the shelves, flicking through the hard back books covered in clear plastic with the well-worn yellowing pages. She remembered H.E. Todd's Bobby Brewster books, Bobby with the hair at the back of his head that always stuck up, where Bobby had adventures with talking torches or kites that could send messages up and down the string. She'd moved on to Mrs Pepperpot, with her lined skirts and black hair held up in a bun, who shrank at the most inappropriate times, often having to ride her black cat home in time for tea. Then came the Enid Blyton adventure stories, ranging from fairies, goblins and talking rabbits to the Secret Seven and the Famous Five, followed by her all-time favourite, C.S. Lewis's The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Days spent skimming the pages to see what would happen next, and talking about the adventures with her pal Emily, who was always at the library, in this very corner, no matter when Sheila arrived. She'd often thought about the story Emily told her of an American guy called Stephen. He had spent a summer staying with his Aunt May and had been in the library nearly every day of his holiday. He had, apparently, been absolutely terrified of clowns, but loved horror books which had encouraged Emily to read. He was the sort of man who makes you think the movement of foliage might be causing the breeze, Emily intimated. I think Mother was glad when he left. She used to put lavender twigs under my pillow to help me sleep, most likely to stop me from being so terrified of the ghosts and ghouls in the pages of the latest book I was reading, she laughed. Emily with her dark brown ringlets, long grey pinafore dress with the white collar peeping through, was the palest girl that Sheila had ever met, but she was also one of the nicest. They would sit and whisper quietly over the stories they had read. They both had an insatiable appetite for books, especially mysteries and horror. Emily had explained how she never went outside because of her polio, and she went to great pains to keep her braced right leg covered by her long petticoat. That was why she read so much. 
She'd once boasted that she'd read just about every book in the library. Well, in the children's section anyway. Sheila had arrived at the library on numerous occasions to see Emily speaking quietly with other readers. She had at first felt a stab of jealousy. Emily explained that she tried to help younger children who had problems reading to pick the right book for them so they'd learn to read and enjoy books more. Sheila and Emily had a special bond, their passion for books bringing them together and had actually been a stimulus to encourage Sheila to study English and history in Trinity College. Sheila's grandmother had died when she was 15, so holidays were spent home from then on, on the other side of the Liffey. It had been years later before she returned to Inchicore Library. She had seen Emily only once, still in the same corner and still wearing the same clothes. She hadn't aged today. Well done, Emily. You've done great work with Shannon, Sheila whispered. Her reading is coming on in leaps and bounds. The scent of lavender became stronger and Sheila smiled as she finished tidying up the books and locking up the library for the night. See you tomorrow, she called, as she tucked a copy of Stephen King's It under her arm and headed out through the green half door.